this computer? Leave meeting, <laughs> as always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Jens. I'm one of the founders of Wundergaf. I'm joined here by a couple of folks uh, from our team. And uh, I think like almost two weeks ago, we launched the Wundergaf Cloud Alpha. And then we discussed how, how the next steps could look like that we want to tackle uh, problems like adding secrets and, and logs, et cetera. And we thought like one of the uh, first biggest problems to tackle is that you want to understand your, your builds, how they work, what's happening, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I would like to, to hand over to uh, Dustin who will present uh, our work on build logs that we did for the last uh, one and a half weeks, I think. Dustin, over to you. Hi. Yeah, as he has mentioned, uh, in the last cycle, we have worked on logs. Basically, uh, yeah, you need logs as soon as you run into an issue. Uh, previously, if you run a build at Wunagraph Cloud and you run into an error, you had no clue what's happening and how you can investigate. So let me share my screen uh, to show you the not new logs feature. Um, yes. So this is a project overview page. Uh, let me make a git commit, just changing um, a, a GraphQL field in operation. I will commit it. So you've created a project on WonderGraph Cloud. It's connected to a Git repo. Exactly. And now you're making a change to trigger a new build. Yeah. Then you see a new build is incoming. And we, right after we stream the logs to the front end, you see what's happening inside inside the builder. So it's already almost done pushing the image. Yeah, it's done. So you see what's happening. Uh, it is split in multiple steps. We, we cloning the repository, we building the image in, in your builder, in your dedicated builder. We generate your Winograph application. And then we push it to the registry and deploy that image to to your production application. And okay. if you reload the page, you get the full logs of your entire deployment. Nice. That's, that's a feature. And by, uh, the, way, nice. by the way, it also uh, laid the foundation for our whole logging infrastructure. So in the future, you can also expect application logs. So yeah. And do you also want to show like a, a failure scenario where yeah, something sure. goes wrong in the build? Yeah, let me uh, make the package log out of Zinc. Um, I will try to use an old uh, Wunder CTL version, commit that package JSON without installing, updating the log file. Then you see here a new deployment has kicked in. Yeah, see, so you also display errors. You also try to infer errors and display them as errors. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, okay. Very nice. <laughs> and do you also want to uh, expand a bit on the, on the logging infrastructure, how it actually works? Yeah, I can show you a rough, rough overview. So, um, we use Vector. Vector is a tool to collect, transform, and route your logging traffic to different providers. We use Loki for that. Uh, and let me log into Datadog. And Datadog has an integration with the Vector. It allows you to observe your whole pipeline. In that way, we could build it very easily and uh, have exactly, uh, uh, yeah, we, we know what, what's happening under the hood. We know how many events are processed uh, uh, every second and if there's any error in the pipeline. Here, for example, you see the whole pipeline of, of the building feature. We uh, observe, we fetch logs from NATs. We uh, transform it uh, in, in an appropriate format. 
we are only interested in our builder applications or your builder applications, map it to the final schema, stripping sensitive information like passwords, email, uh, etc., and then ingest it to Loki, our logging uh, storage. And Loki is uh, very fast uh, and we can almost uh, stream it to you in near real time. That's that's pretty much it. And yeah, in the front end, we uh, fetch every two seconds for updates and uh, show it to you. Awesome. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah, and maybe one one uh, little thing, one detail is uh, you can also here uh, enable short time step or yeah some small things, but uh, maybe you like it and yeah. Awesome. All right, that's it. So if you are participant of the alpha, <laughs> that feature is uh, already available. So if you go to your uh, to your cloud account, cloud.wondergraph.com. You can already try this out and give us feedback in the alpha channel. So that's for the cloud. But uh, as you mentioned several times, we are uh, a user of Wondergraph ourselves for our Wondergraph cloud. So whenever you actually see the cloud dashboard, we're using our own open source product. And uh, one of the things that we that we focused very early on is a very good integration with SWR uh, because we're using Next.js in the front end. And uh, yeah, we wanted to improve our, our open source integration between uh, Wondergraph, Next.js, and SWR. And that's where Ilko wants to present the, the work of the last uh, couple of days where we worked heavily on, on making that or bringing that to the next level. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So let me share my screen. Um, so yeah, for uh, a while ago, we released already the SWR package, which uh, you can use to generate type safe uh, hooks that can be used in your React uh, projects. Um, and last week, we, we updated it to SWR version 2, which has a really nice update, which is use mutation. Since before, the version one uh, was mainly focused on fetching data and not so much on mutating or, or posting. And so this is a really nice addition to the library. Um, and that was also the time for us to start up upgrading and migrating our Next.js package to SWR. And um, so here I have a, a little demo that shows the live weather in Berlin. And this is actually a, a live query. So uh, a live query is a HTTP subscription to our Wondergraph server. And the server pulls our, the weather API on a specific uh, interval. I think it's a second here. Um, so when I refresh the page, you can see it's completely instant. Uh, the weather information is already there. Um, I can show you here in the network tab and uh, the live preview. So this is, uh, yeah, it's the piece of streaming rendered uh, on the server. And um, let me show you how, what you need to do to make this work. So we have two functions here. We have the higher order component uh, with Wundergraph. You can wrap your uh, Next.js app or your uh, page with the function. And we have use query, use subscription, and use mutation hooks. Um, so here we have the use query uh, to get the weather. And you can see we have these operations available on our server. Um, if you want to have a regular query like this, you can see now the, the page is not updating automatically. And to make it live query, we can just add live query is true. And bam, the data is real time on your page. So this is all you need to do to, to make server-side rendering work in your Next.js app, which is, I think, pretty awesome. Um, so 
let's show you a little bit about the details, how it works. We have here the, the width wonder graph, higher order component, which what happens is we, we set up, uh, we wrap the, the page with our wonder graph uh, provider, contact provider with our internal SSR cache. And we add the SWR config with fallback property. Uh, and we have a special SSR middleware that hooks into our uh, SWR hooks uh, and makes sure that all the, 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 the data is fetched on server-side rendering. Um, um, so we fetch the data uh, in the get initial props um, with help of SSR prepass. Uh, what this does basically is it, it renders your app on the server and then um, our our middleware adds all the the query hooks uh, promises to our SSR cache and when the page is rendered and, and the cache is ready, we loop over the cache and check all the promises and return the data. And then the return data is passed down to the SWR fallback and SWR does the rest for us. So let's also show a little bit how the, the middleware works. So the our SWR hooks are completely independent from our um, Next.js package. And one powerful feature that I, I really like is the, the middleware that SWR supports. So you can basically uh, execute code before any hook uh, is called and then decide, uh, yeah, you can basically change the, the response and the return or the functionality of, of hooks. So what we do here is um, we, we return the, the hook, this is the original hook. Um, we get the wonder graph context with our SSR cache. Then we check if this uh, is on the server and if this uh, hook should be uh, server-side rendered. Uh, and then we check also if this uh, hook is a wonder graph operation. Uh, if it's not, then we just return the hook and it will function like a regular SWR hook. So if you have existing SWR hooks in existing code, it will just continue working like normally. Um, yeah, then we do a few other things. We serialize the key to a string. We check if this operation is authenticated. So as SSR also works with user authentication. Um, this is checked with uh, metadata that is available in the types of, types of script client. Um, yeah, and basically what we do is um, each SSR hook has a, has a fetcher and this is responsible for fetching data from the server. Uh, and we set this to the SSR cache on the specific string key. Um, so use query always normally has a, a fetcher, but for live queries and subscriptions we don't because they, they update the SWR cache asynchronous asynchronously and so what we do is we create our custom fetcher for SSR and um, yeah with wonder graph we have a, a little trick we can actually do a normal get query on subscriptions and we can pass in subscribe once which will return the result of a subscription directly instead of setting up a, a stream uh, and so we can use this result in to render subscriptions on the server, which is a really awesome feature of Wunder Graph, I think. Um, yeah, and then we just return the, we set the promise and the rest is handled like I explained before in the higher order component. And yeah, that's basically it, how it works. Nice. So, so just to reiterate, on the server, we turn a stream into a regular one-off get request with this mm -hmm. subscribe once flag, which gets automatically set by the by the higher order component or the, the hook because we detect we're on a server. Yeah. That allows us to server-side render um, subscriptions and, and live queries. And all you have to do for that to work is you use the SWR hooks. 
and you wrap your component with this with Wundercraft. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Nice. How can I try this today? What's the what's the process of using this? Um, so you can today you can use our uh, old client, but this will be released in the next few days, and uh, okay. you can you can check out uh, the docs on docs.wundergraph.com and the examples in our repository. Nice. Yeah. If if you're interested in in using this very early, then probably just uh, join us on on our Discord wondergraph.com slash discord, mm -hmm. and then uh, you get an update once it's ready. Um, I think that's it for this week. And we will probably be back in two weeks with another update. Is there anything I missed, Stefan? No, I think you pretty much hit everything. Um, regarding alpha, feedback is going great. We have closed up our alpha feedback loop so there are no more spots but if you message me maybe we can find you a spot or two but regarding beta we're filling up on spots very quickly so make sure that you click up on the banner to sign up for our beta but other than that like Jan said we'll be back in two weeks with another update uh, I'm super excited to see the logging I know a lot of alpha feedback has been about the logging and I think that's pretty much it but super excited for beta I can't wait for everyone to try it out in real time nice I think for the for the next cycle our focus is secret management, and we are building an integration with React Query. Um, so yeah, that's it from our side. If you have any feedback, join us on Discord, and we'll be back in two weeks. Perfect. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Bye, guys.